The big news for the Selwood Bridge recently has been the movement, or translation, of the old Selwood Bridge truss off of its original piers onto the temporary bridge piers. The old truss now sits on piers that were built in 2012, just north of where the new Selwood Bridge will be built over the next couple of years. The continued use of the old truss fits right in with a popular sentiment in the Portland, Oregon area, reduce, reuse, recycle. The old truss was moved on Saturday, January 19, 2013. Typical January weather in Portland usually consists of gray skies and cold rain, but skies were sunny and it was a great day for Omega Morgan, the subcontractor in charge of the move, to complete their work, and also a great day for the public to visit the site and observe the activities. In addition to being photographed by hundreds of spectators, the event was covered by local television networks and newspapers, all of which reported on the progress and success of this historic bridge maneuver. Not wanting to repeat everything that has already been reported about this event, this slideshow will focus on some details that might not have been as widely presented or photographed, starting with views from all around the site and ending with some more detailed technical information. The old Selwood Bridge Truss spans the Willamette River's banks, leaving gaps between itself and Macadam Avenue on the west and Tacoma Street on the east. In preparation for moving the truss, new approach roadways were built from Macadam and Tacoma. Prior slideshows in this series highlighted the construction of the approach piers between Macadam Avenue and the river. To complete the west approach, steel beams were installed across the piers and precast concrete panels were attached to the steel beams. The panels were picked up off of a truck by a crane and here Two workers guide the suspended panel into place to form the approach roadway from Macadam Avenue onto the bridge. Here's a view of the approach roadway from late December. Just before moving the old truss, a portion of the bridge west of the truss was demolished. Here's a view from the west end of the bridge on the day of the move. At the time this photo was taken, the truss was about halfway through its journey from the old concrete piers to the new temporary piers to the north. In this photo, you can see a man standing at the end of the new approach roadway from Macadam Avenue, the old truss several hours into its historic move, and the remains of some of the infamously narrow sidewalk at the west end of the old bridge. A portion of the east end of the bridge was demolished just prior to the move as well. This photo was taken in December, where you can still see the old bridge above one of the condos remaining on the east side. This photo was taken on January 18th, after some of the bridge had been removed. Here you can see a pile of broken up concrete, which was once part of the bridge deck and one or more piers of the old bridge. This material has since been removed from the site. This view is from the east end of the old bridge. You can see the east end of the truss, the end of the new approach roadway from Tacoma Street, the top of one of the old concrete piers, and the edge of the old roadway. This view is from the east end of the old bridge looking south toward Selwood Harbor condominiums. Substantial demolition has taken place to make space for the new bridge. The old Pier 17 stood on the East River Bank and supported the east end of the truss. The new temporary Pier 17 is shown here at the end of November 2012, and here it is at the end of December. The day before the truss was moved, you can see that part of the bridge has been removed past the end of the truss, Steel beams and precast concrete panels have been installed to form the roadway from Tacoma Street, and a staircase has been built for workers to get to the work platform at the top of the pier. Personal safety and clear communication are two extremely important issues at any construction site. Here, a worker wears a safety harness, 
necessary when working in a location from which it would be dangerous to fall. Here, a worker attaches his safety harness to a tie-off point. Construction sites are typically noisy environments, and workers frequently have to provide instructions to someone operating equipment, such as a crane, from a distance. Here, a man signals to the crane operator that the panel is securely hooked up and ready to be lifted off of the truck. So how did they move the Selwood Bridge truss? Multnomah County engineer Ed Wartman provided technical details on the county's website for this project, and some of those details are presented in the following photos. Basically, the truss was lifted slightly and pushed closer to downtown Portland, the western end moving 66 feet and the eastern end moving half that amount. For many months now, translation beams have been visible, connecting the old concrete bridge piers to the new temporary bridge piers. Five pairs of translation beams were installed between the old and new piers. Shorter beams were placed on top of the translation beams. Then, these orange track beams were installed. In this photo, you can see two track beams and some of the Teflon pads that were glued into the track beams. On the day of the move, an Omega Morgan representative mentioned that Dawn liquid dish detergent was applied to the pads to lubricate the sliding surfaces. Here, you see an orange skid beam placed in the track beam. During the move, each skid beam supported two vertical hydraulic jacks. So how did the translation beams, track beams, and skid beams move the bridge? The point where the truss rests on the pier is called a bearing. This photo was taken at a bearing location. This structure is part of a custom-made cradle which supports the truss around its bearing point. Here are the track beam, the skid beam, and the hydraulic lifting jacks. In this photo, on the day of the move, the jacks are extended upward, lifting the cradle, thereby lifting the truss at its bearing point. Zooming out and looking at Pier 21 that day, you can see that the truss has two bearing points per pier, each with a pair of track beams and skid beams. Also visible on the south side of the pier are the horizontal hydraulic jacks which pushed the bridge northward. This slideshow is the ninth in a series about the construction of the new Selwood Bridge. For earlier slideshows, please visit www.sitespecificmedia.blogspot.com. For more information on the Selwood Bridge project in general, including some of the technical information presented in this slideshow, please visit www.selwoodbridge.org.